if what you're doing isn't working, let's try something else. Let's frame this differently. Let's go at it a different way and just keep trying because that's what's worked for me over time. Sometimes we do something, it doesn't hit, it doesn't stick, but then we change what we're doing and it works. So today on Sea Level, I have Karen Frome. She is the founder of Rise Projects. Karen, welcome. Thank you, Chris. I'm excited to be here. Oh yeah, me too. I, you know, and, and anything that deals with creative, and you're in the creative, the creative business is uh, is always fun to talk about. So before we get into it, let me get a little bit of background on you. Tell me, tell me, you know, where you're from, how'd you get into this business, that type of stuff. Sure. Well, one important thing about me that has nothing to do with what I do is that I'm a born and bred New Yorker, but that influences all hey, of me. Hey, I'm Jersey. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, but I'm an architect and a designer, and I got into this really from an early age. I loved making things, whether it was crafts or drawing and stuff like that. And as I got older, I got more and more interested in architecture. And now I kind of feel like I'm like almost like a band leader or something because the architect doesn't actually build, but they kind of score and direct and so on. So that's the analogy that I use. Kind of like the quarterback, right? You know, you're kind of facilitating exactly. everything. Exactly. But I'm not actually on the field, really. Mm. So what was what what it like? I mean, so because you're working with like teams and stuff like that, right? Yes, absolutely. We have the design team and then the construction team. And obviously the clients are a super important team. That's, that's cool. So, you know, in, in some of the design thinking, right, a lot of times you're faced with, with obstacles, right? And so, you know, client changes their mind or there's something going on, right? How do you go about turning a lot of those obstacles into, uh, into opportunities? Yeah, that's something we like to say at Rise Projects. We say we turn obstacles into opportunities and it can be in very specific things. You can't see the picture that's behind me right now, but there's a fireplace there and the that fireplace was born out of an obstacle. There was a big column in this dining room. It's in an apartment in Manhattan and we couldn't move it. It's holding up the rest of the building. So what we did was actually turn it into a fireplace, made it into this beautiful stone clad fireplace that is actually drawing people to it and has a purpose. And so that's turning an obstacle into an opportunity. Another example at a different scale would be really when COVID first hit, we used that time to kind of hone all of our marketing materials. We redid our website and so on. So it was a real obstacle in the sense that we didn't have a lot of work. Things kind of ground to a halt for a bit, but we turned it into an opportunity and it served us well now that we're really busy again. That's awesome. You know, it's, it's like a, it's like a saying, I think the military um, has, has a saying to where, you know, adapt and overcome, mm -hmm. exactly. right? Because no matter where you are in business, whatever line of work you are, you're always going to have these ob obstacles thrown at you. And you got to just figure, all right, this is here now. I have to deal with this here now. How do I overcome it? And um, what's really cool is, is, like I said, like the example you just, you just put out I mean how many times is like there's a column in the middle of like the room the workspace like and it's like this ugly thing that's just hold, you know holding up the building you can't really work around it it maybe it's too expensive to get like some sort of like steel eye beam to go across to open it up right and so you know using that creativity is is uh, pretty ingenious I like that yeah, and we like to think of it really as design kind of thinking or creative thinking that we can kind of think our way out of different problems. Sometimes it's a logistical problem. Sometimes it's a design problem in terms of aesthetics. It could be any different thing, but that same approach to thinking outside of the box and saying, what can we do that will actually make this serve our ends is what we like to bring to the table. Yeah, it's, uh, and and it's just so important because you never know what you're going to be faced with, right? And and so what are what are some examples of uh, you know some other examples that you know working with clients you were thinking outside the box and in and, uh, and coming up with with solutions? Uh, there are definitely other. There are examples when we work in remote environments, for example, mm. we need to work on a really condensed schedule. So we have to look at phasing things in particular ways that will work for that. So we do a lot of work out um, in Fire Island where things are only accessible by ferry. You can't drive materials in. And so out there, we turn that into an opportunity to figure out how to build something quickly and efficiently and cost effectively that really serves our clients. That's awesome. 
And, and so when, when a client comes to you, like how, how, what's this, what's the structure? They, did they have like kind of an idea of what, what they want to do and then you flesh the whole thing out or do they, how does that, how does the, what's the process? We're lucky that we have a really wide range of types of clients. So we have a lot of residential clients, but we also have commercial clients. We're working with a bunch of restaurants right now. Um, so we have a wide range of different, and we're working with Columbia University. It really depends on the client. What we do first is listen and understand what the parameters are for the project. Sometimes a client comes to us and they have very clear ideas of what they want, and they really just want help in executing them, figuring out how to get something made or built. Other times people come to us with like a blank slate and they're just like, here's a piece of property or here's a space that we need to occupy. What do we need to do? What are, you, what are your opinions? How can we make this look amazing? And so we can do really as little or as much as any client needs. That's awesome. So on the design side, like have you ever you know, had these conversations with some of your designers, like how do they come up with the inspiration for certain things? Like, like I've talked to some designers where, you know, they'll do research in, in the area and, and kind of bring the outside in, right? That, so what, what's, what's your team's approach on all that? I mean, site is always one of the first things along with the client's needs. Um, but after that, I think we have a very consistent aesthetic that goes across all of our work. So even though what we do for different clients is always unique and special and serves what they want. Nevertheless, it, you know, I think if you look across our body of work, you'll feel like there are consistent sort of modern, clean lines, refined look. We really love materiality and we love to use materials in unexpected ways. Um, one thing that we often do is, you know, we work, for example, with a boys charter school in the East Village and they did not know what they wanted to do when they came to us, but they knew they needed to do something aesthetic to sort of help their space. Um, they were losing students because the space was so run down and they had a really little budget and so we did things like use color and um you know inexpensive materials and unexpected ways to make things pop and read and so on that kind of gave it a graphic fun feeling when the boys came back to school in the fall and we did it all over one short summer the boys came back and like toured people around at the opening of the school and people were tearing up because they were the boys were just like we can't believe we go to a school in a building that looks like this. And just, you know, with some fresh paint and fresh eyes and kind of cleaning things up, you can make a tremendous difference. Oh yeah. I, you know, and I don't think you know, some people don't realize like your environment, it does, it does have an effect on your emotions, right? Like it does, it does do something to you. And, and I find, and, and I don't know, maybe, maybe you agree with this is, is like when you're in like a creative space, you know, having, having color and things, you know, to, to kind of, drum up that creativity. That's why when you go to a lot of, um, you know, agencies and creative offices and stuff like that, it's just got unique, like just sculptures and paintings and all this stuff. And it puts you in a certain frame of mind, whereas if you're kind of, you know, you got mold on your ceiling and, you know, it's like, like it's probably, you know, not, not going to keep you as creative as, as you need to be. Right. Your space is definitely mold the way you think and makes it more conducive to be creative for sure. You're hundred percent right. So now you, you work with, with, um, bigger teams, right? So, so, um, what, tell me, tell me your views on, um, diversity and, and the importance of diversity in the creative process. I want to get your views on it. So our office is predominantly female. We're maybe 85% female. Um, and we have people from a huge variety of backgrounds overseas and, and American. Um, and we really feel like it's important that everyone feels like their voice is welcome. And that by bringing that diversity of perspectives, that it actually helps our clients because having people who understand spaces and the way things look from different uh, uh, backgrounds brings value and allows us to be more creative and think outside the box more and so on. So we we really value the diversity of our team and we look to work with consultants and contractors who have similar kinds of teams and kinds of value. It's really, I mean, it's part of our corporate culture. Yeah, I, I think that's so important. And no matter what, what business, I mean, everybody has, everybody has different experiences, different backgrounds, like that type of stuff. And when you're in a collaborative environment, it's really important to kind of listen to those, right? Because you can, I always look at, you know, I work in the movie business and it's like building a project, right? Like, like everybody, 
um, has input and you're all kind of working together. And it's important to, to stop and listen to what somebody else may have to say, regardless, I believe, and regardless of their title, right? It's like, they have, they have, they have, they have some thoughts on and, and some opinions on it that might just add that little thing that you're so involved in it exactly. that you didn't see it. You missed it. Yep. Right? 100%. So, yeah. You said it really it well. Yeah. So that like a junior person has lived experience that is different than yours. And sometimes they just see something that you're like in the middle of it. You're not thinking about it. And they say something and you're like, Oh, that's it. Of course. You know, how did I miss it? But you know, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's all about like, you know, we talk about as business owners, you know, you're, you're, you're working in the business as opposed to on the business. Sometimes when you're in the, the day-to-day, the grind, you know, putting everything together, you're missing some of these details where somebody that's outside that role can see it. And, and so that's, what's gonna, that's, what's going to help you help you kind of, kind of, you know, maybe a new idea or, or overcome, you know, an objection that you weren't seeing. It was right in front of your face, but that's because you're too involved. You're too, you're too uh, buried in. Yeah. A hundred percent. Right. So let's talk. I mean, a lot of things have, you know, gone on obviously with COVID and then there's, you know, things, people are working more from home and, you know, what, what does this look like? What is, what is the, the, the future of the work and work experience? What, what, what does that look like? I think that there are two things going on that we're seeing. Lots of people on our residential projects are asking for, you know, offices at home or spaces dedicated to work and so on. They need quiet, especially from their children, even if the children are going back to school after school hours and all of that. So they're looking for that. Sometimes we have spouses who, you know, my husband's in the other room yelling, I need to have quiet so I can do a phone call without that and that kind of thing. Um, But then also on the commercial front, we're seeing people who really want to go back to work. And I mean, I can say I miss the in-person collaboration that we had day to day. And we're somewhat in the office and we're on job sites at this point. But it's it's a little bit back and forth and unclear how that's going to go. But I'm talking to a lot of people who are thinking the office is really going to be a place more for collaboration and about bringing people together than about sitting at your desk and working by yourself. So that kind of siloed work, you'll still in a lot of scenarios, be able to do at home or remotely or wherever you want. But offices will be places for coming together for brainstorming and thinking and collaborating. Um, And I think that's what people miss because on Zoom, it's just, you can have 10 people on a Zoom, but it's impossible to have that kind of ad hoc, free flowing environment that you have when you're in person. You know, it's interesting. I I heard something, uh, I believe it was Simon Sinek that mentioned this uh, about the virtual versus being in an office Mm -hmm. and, you know, your team building, it's important because team building actually happens after the meeting. It happens like after the meeting's over and be like, Hey, you want to go grab some coffee? Mm -hmm. You want to go, you want to go grab a bite to eat right after that sales meeting with that client, you know, talking about how it went like that, that's when the, the collaboration that's, that's the important thing in building, building, building an organization. And so, um, there are some companies that, you know, it, it's difficult, right? They're hybrid. Some of them are in person. Some of them are not. What I've started doing is, is, you know, not having such agendas on like, so such like time crunch, Hey, this is our meeting and it's ended. And then we're all off every once in a while. It's good that I think if, if people would stay on, stay on a little bit longer and just, just kind of talk through some things. And I've done this in some of, some of our sales meetings and some of some of these other meetings that we had, that's important, right? And that's important. That's an important piece that I think we're, you know, we're, we're missing because of the situation, you know, a lot of, a lot of places are under lockdown. So, you know, I, I agree with you, you know, I, I think, you know, having people, there are people that want to come back and have that uh, in-person camaraderie again. Yeah. I, you definitely said it well. I mean, early on we were doing things like having cocktail hours together with our team and stuff like that. But, you know, what I found is that the people who are quiet, it's harder to kind of, you feel like you're calling them out on a Zoom call, right? Like, hey, what do you think? How was your weekend? And they, you can tell they feel a little uncomfortable and it's, it's hard, or at least it was very hard for me to elicit from them, you know, any kind of sense of being relaxed and, and what you're talking about sort of after work feeling and so on. So, I know I'm, I'm hoping we can get back to work in person soon. (laughs) 
Yeah. Well, especially because, you know, building the, these, these environments for people, you know, building these, these things, you know, I, it's, it's important. So I always, you know, we're coming to the top of our episode we kind of, you know, I kind of close out, like if there was one piece of leadership advice or team building advice or whatever you've seen in your field that you would give to somebody, what would that be? I think for me, it would just be keep at it. And if what you're doing doesn't work, just try something else. Like, I mean, it goes back to that creative thinking piece, right? Like if what you're doing isn't working, let's try something else. Let's frame this differently. Let's go at it a different way and just keep trying because that's what's worked for me over time. Sometimes we do something, it doesn't hit, it doesn't stick, but then we change what we're doing and it works. So, I absolutely love that, Karen. That So keep creative, keep thinking about ways to uh, overcome situations and turn those obstacles into opportunities. Karen, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Chris. It was great to be here. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, make sure you mash that like button and subscribe so you get the latest episodes. And if somebody else needs to hear it, please do them that favor and share it.